welcome to session 32 of the Little Wolf Knits podcast. I am Brianna and I'm the dire designer human behind the Little Wolf Knits and this YouTube channel. If you just found your way to us, welcome. We're so excited to have you. And if you're coming back, thanks for coming to hang out again. It is Tuesday, March 5th today, recording a little bit earlier in the week this time. So it hasn't been exactly a full week, but I have a very busy day tomorrow. So I figured getting it in today would likely be the only way a podcast goes up this week. So I'm super excited to chat with you. It's like gray and dreary and gloomy outside. So I am cozy and comfy and excited to talk about knitting. So let's jump into it. First, should we talk about what I'm wearing? <laughs> This is a cardigan I made a long time ago. I think it may have been last winter, honestly. And it's so cozy. It's so cozy. I don't wear cardigans as much as I wear pullovers, so I feel like I don't wear them as much. But when I do, I'm like, man, I need more cardigans. They're so good. But I'll stand up and show you. This is the Seasons cardigan from Ozetta and it is half fisherman's rib I believe and this is my birthday suit sunfish held with Badlands National Park on my buoy base which is Surrey so it's just like this cool watercolor effect little spots of color rather than something really bright and variegated and I love it so much I love the little spots of green in Badlands and how it plays with olive green that I wear so much. And these really cool buttons that are like wooden or bone maybe that were given to me as a gift a long time ago. And it was really fun to pick out the buttons for this and put them on. But super cozy. It is oversized. I did not gauge swatch. And I don't know that I hate gauge, although it is supposed to be a like loose baggy sweatshirt style fit cardigan, but I love it so much. And that's what I'm wearing today. Let's talk a little bit about admin, like important updates right now. And then we'll talk about yarny updates a little bit later in the podcast in case not everybody is interested. I guess. Um, just big announcements. Cozy Peaks and Cheeks Mouse still going on. I've talked about it every week, so I'm not going to say anything more than that. But join us and use the hashtag for prizes. Second thing that's happening. Well, I feel like the second thing I was going to say is yarn related. I'll just say overall that the Cookies 2.0 pre-order is out the door. Many of the orders are already out the door. I'm finalizing the last few orders and charms, which are last steps in the process, and they are getting out the door. And I'm excited for the next venture, the next little mini collection that I'm doing here. I'm gonna be dying up soon, aka potentially this week, and I can't wait. I'm super, super excited. There may have been a spoiler in another connection, a little Easter egg for what's to come. So if anyone has any guesses about what my next collection might be, drop them below and we'll see how well you all know me. I guess those are the only admin updates. So let's move on to projects. I don't have anything that I finished this week. I thought I would have finished and I could have finished both of my whips, but I didn't. You'll hear why. So let's jump into what I'm working on. First thing I'm working on is, I don't know if it's a thing you saw first, but it's the thing that actually got most of my love and attention this week because I cannot stop knitting with my hand spun yarn. 
If you're a spinner and you have not been knitting with your hands spun because you're scared, because you're nervous, don't. Don't be. Don't be. Don't be like me. Be better than me because this is amazing. This is in a Finch's Nest project bag. I think I've just decided at this point it's going to live in here until it's done. And I switched things over. But we have my hand spun yarn. This is my first ever dyed and spun by me fiber. This is a Falkland sample that I now carry in my shop, which is very exciting. And the project that I'm making with it that could have and should have been a finished object is, oh my gosh, it's so pretty. <laughs> I've not like seen it like this. Sometimes, okay, when you like hold something in front of you and you're like, it's pretty, and then you put it on a screen. Um, well, this is it. <laughs> The Traveler Cowl by Andrew Mowry and my husband yarn. And this is the child size, so it doesn't fit me. So don't be like, well, Brie, that's way too small. Um, it doesn't fit me. And I actually almost finished this yesterday. I frogged about three or four inches because what I had done was knit too long. I didn't want to waste my hand spun and have leftovers. So I was like, let me see how far I can push this. And then I played yarn chicken and I ran out. So that's okay because I've been loving on this so much that I just frogged back and now have started the shaping a bit earlier and I think I'll be okay. And I just love this. This is, I, I was explaining to friends yesterday, it's certainly not superwash merino wool, right? Like Falkland micron count is a bit higher. It's not super fine. But there's something about hand spun, the squish factor, and also like the lanolin, feeling the wooly like naturalness of this yarn is unreal. It's so, it's so amazing. I, I can't believe I made this. Like I know I, I know everyone makes their knitting projects, but the fact that I made this basically from scratch, the only thing I could have done differently was own of the sheep, sheared it, and processed it. But from fleece, processed fleece, to this finished product, I will have done all of the steps, and that is amazing and unreal. I really, really love this. I won't keep going on about it, but that's what I worked on yesterday after I frogged about four inches. Because this is going to be my mindless knitting for tonight, and I didn't want to get too far on it so that I run out of yarn. Oh, I was like, where are my stitch stoppers? I don't have stitch stoppers on here because I gifted my chocolate ice cream stitch stoppers that were on here to my mom, which I'll talk about later in life stuff, but that's really exciting. So whip number one, loving this. It'll be done probably today or tomorrow. I don't want it to be, but I do have my other hand spun in here that I'm going to cast on immediately after. And I honestly think I'm planning one for myself in another skein of hand spun that I have for immediately after that. I always want to have a hand spun project on the needles. I think, I think that's just going to be a new norm for me because it is unreal and it is so amazing. So that's whip number one. Whip number two, I had something you've seen again already. This is in Fancy Boy Designs, a Valentine bag. Again, I think it's just gonna live in here until I'm done with it and then I'll, we'll put this project bag away until next year. In it, I have my classic on 420. And I know people will ask about my nails because they always do. This is Essie Merino. Cool is the color right it's like this merino merino it's like this purplish gray once I saw the name I was sold obviously but what am I making with my classic on 420 I am making my sister's central lab cable crop for her birthday later this month and yesterday I finished the front panel super excited I had worked on the body last week, I think, 
maybe the day I podcasted, maybe on Wednesday, or perhaps on Thursday. And then I like put it down, put it aside, and got sucked into the other whip, uh, into my shawl. Worked on that pretty much all weekend until yesterday. Monday and Tuesday, I said, I'm gonna finish this front panel, and I did. And now I'm just working on the back panel, which is two by two ribbing, some light shaping at the beginning. And my goal is to work on the shaping today and this afternoon, but have this as a secondary project or perhaps my first project for movie knitting tonight because I can do two by two. Rib in the dark, I would prefer to do it without shaping. So that will be the plan. And again, that will be done in the next day or two, which means I'll have no whips on the needles and I will need to cast something on. I mean, I will cast on that hand, the second hand spun shawl pretty much immediately. And then I think that means I need to get my thick beachcomber flares into testing and cast on a second sample of another pattern that y'all have been very, very excited about. Y'all have been waiting since I teased it last like September, October. And you'll hear about it soon enough. Maybe next week you'll hear a little bit more about it and maybe you will even see a second sample of it on the needles. But that is my second knitting whip. I only have one other whip and it's not even knitting, it's spinning. But I think you're gonna be excited to see this one because it is a long, long, awaited spinning project. It is on my Hanson. I'm spinning a pro. She's a beauty in maple, but this is my Hello Sunshine Fiber from Nest Fiber Co. I'm spinning it up. I'm obsessed with this colorway so, so much. Like look at that chartreuse green. Look at it in the braid. It's so good. I will say, it is a merino flax silk base. And I don't think I really like flax. Honestly, there are like really big chunks of it. And when there's a really big chunk of it, I'm pulling it out because I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like, I, I feel like I'm wrestling with my spinning wheel. Um, I'm not enjoying this spin as much. It feels like crunchy, which I'm sure will be nice um, in the finished yarn. But when I get to a chunk of it, I mostly just pull it out. So I'm learning things about myself, which is helpful to know that maybe flax heavy fiber is not the fiber for me to purchase next time. But I'm glad I learned because otherwise I wouldn't have known. But my plan for this, I am spinning this quite fine because my plan for this is for this to go into a three ply with two other braids that I have. I'm doing a little combo spin and I think I'm going to have three braids worth. So a little over 300 grams, almost 350 grams. And I would like to make a DRK everyday sweater. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm thinking about sweaters that I don't have in my wardrobe. I like the shape of and ones that are perfect for hand spun yarn. And I think that one will be it. So this is going to be one ply. And let me show you my other two plies. You've seen these before many podcasts ago in my acquisition section, but this is going to be fun. This is Malabrigo Noob, um, which is straight pure merino wool. And this one is Arco Iris. And this one is Diana. And at first I was like, oh, this is going to be really bright. Am I going to want to wear this as a sweater? Maybe I'll make a shawl. And I thought about the traveler shawl. And then I thought I usually don't actually grab shawls that are this bright. I like a shawl that's a little bit more neutral, maybe has some color, but I don't know how often I would wear it. Like this is, this is my color palette that I wear most days. And this shawl would not go very well with it. So I think a sweater, it has to be. And I'm thinking that once they're all spun and plied together, 
It's going to tone the whole thing down a bunch more, right? Just like look at the three of them together. I think it's gonna be really, really pretty. And I'm really excited. And honestly, I'm excited to get through this because I'm not enjoying this ply as much as I thought I would. And then get to these because I think I'm going to enjoy these. And that'll be really fun. Um, this is what's left of two ounces that I have. So I just have another two ounce little bit here of this fiber. But I did this all in one sitting and then I haven't done it for two days. So if and when I get back to spinning, this is gonna go quickly and I'm going to be very, very excited about it. But that's what we got for our spinning whips today. I haven't touched my spindle in probably two weeks now and I'm okay with it. I think I'm okay with that. Um, when I'm ready, when I'm feeling the itch, I'll get back to it and it'll be there. It's not going anywhere. But I've really, really been loving my wheel. We've also been home the past few weekends, so I wonder if I haven't been, like, bringing my spindle with me as much because we've been in Bethlehem and I've had my wheel available. And I think when I have the two available, wheel is definitely the one I'm going to use. But those are all the things I've worked on in the past week. So let's talk a little bit about acquisitions. Yeah, acquisitions. I have acquired some things and you guessed it it's fiber because that's all I buy now um I just found out about this artist oh look at that look at it um I don't know how on Instagram someone posted about them and I said oh I want to shop that update so I grabbed a couple braids, again, with the thought of combo spins in mind. Um, thinking that like three braids for a combo spin is really a good amount for me, for a sweater, for a shawl. So trying to think about that. And I got four braids because I think one of the braids is going to go well with a few braids I already have. That's why. So here's what I'm thinking, and maybe these three go together, although I don't know if they're too, maybe they're too similar, and they need a pop of color or a pop of something. Um, I kind of thought this was going to be the pop. I don't know. What do you think? Will that be beautiful, or does it need something else? I don't know. I think that's going to be beautiful. I think it's going to be beautiful, but this fiber is from Allaire Artifacts in Canada, I think. I think. I'm pretty sure it's in Canada. And this braid is Kent Romney. Um, it does not have a colorway name as far as I can see on here. And this is 100% Kent Romney, which is 27 to 29 microns. So in that sort of Falkland range, a little bit more rustic, but beautiful. This one, oh, here you go, is Falkland. 100% Falkland and 28 microns. So again, coming in at that rustic, woolly, lanolin-y beautifulness. And this, I'm really excited about this because um, I, I have only ever spun this in my Nest Fiber Advent, but this is 100% gray Corydale that was dyed and look how moody that one is. And this is 25 to 30 microns. So again, sticking in this range and I think it will be a beautiful, this I could see as a shawl. Can you see this as a shawl for me? I definitely can. But those are three braids I got. I'm keeping them in the tissue paper they came in so they don't get all yucky and felty. And then I got one more braid that was a little different, intended to go with something else, but honestly, I could certainly mix this in. And it's beautiful. This is a Polworth, Polworth Llama Silk. And 50% Polworth, 30% Llama, 20% Tussa Silk. And look at this one. This is 
so soft. And I have two other braids that are quite similar from Akara yarns. Let's see. Let me see if I can grab them. Let me see if I can grab them. Uh, here they are. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I didn't know if these would be too similar, but... Uh, those are beautiful. Again, I don't know if I'm going to use these together. You've seen these. These are count, uh, merino alpaca camel silk, so similar sort of content. But when I was buying them, I said, clearly I have a style. And clearly I will use them <laughs> with something because that braid was too gorgeous to leave in the shop by itself. It also reminded me a lot of... <laughs> Um, this Persephone braid. So I was like, yeah, I definitely have a style. I definitely have a vibe and I'm okay with it. I'm just going to collect fiber forever. Just kidding. Cause I have plans and I'm actually spinning. So those are the things I've acquired in the last week. And I'm so in love with all of them. Next, let's talk about yarny things because there are a few things in the shop that are super, super exciting. I don't want anyone to miss out on. And then maybe we'll talk about life stuff after. But for now, yarny things. We have so many fun fiber things coming this month. I want to make sure no one misses out on any of them. So if you're not interested, go ahead, sign off now. Thanks for watching. I'm just going to talk about life after this. But if you are interested, get ready because there's going to be some exciting things here. First, let's start with our March clubs because every month we have clubs. I didn't have the colorways dyed, skeined, and ready to show yet last week, but now that I have... I'm obsessed, and both of these clubs are such different vibes as we like head into spring, and one is really like earthy and natural and like harnessing the, the naturalness of spring, and the other one is like bright, fun, poppy, and they're both so, so good. The first one, we have our Friendly Open Road Club, ah, and this is a colorway for Horseshoe Bend. And it's so good. It's got like these reds, these grays, these different deep like foresty green, and then this lichen-y, olive-y green, and browns, and they're, it's just beautiful, honestly. Like, look at my outfit right now. This is the vibe, and I love that. This travel inspired club captures such different moods and such different vibes depending on the place and the photo. And this one is so good. So that is available now. I've had a few folks on Instagram asking if the March Club is still available and it is through maybe the third week of the month. And then I dye them in the last week of the month and get them out to everyone. Usually by the end of the month or beginning of the next month. But this is available. And the other club that we have for Marge, it is the last month of our Gilmore Girls inspired clubs this quarter, which is very sad um, because we love Gilmore Girls, but also exciting because there are some other clubs coming soon. And I can't wait for everyone to see those. But this one is called I can't get started. I was like, oh my gosh, what's the name of this? I can't get started. I was thinking I can't stand still. I'm like, that's not the name. Will you just stand still is another colorway. I can't get started. And here I am waving them about, but look at this one. It has these like raspberries, pinky, punchy colors, mauves, this like army green, this teal, speckles of all of those and mm, it's 
so good. <laughs> like imagine a, a fun little shawl or like a summer tank top or spring sort of crop top. I think this would be such a beautiful, such a beautiful vibe. And that is also available in the shop with or without a charm. Like I said, for the next few weeks until they're gone. So if you want a March club, make sure to get one now. Okay, that is March clubs. The other things that are in the shop that are so exciting, I talked about it last week, but in case you missed it, Moana inspired countdown for July, and we are so excited. It seems like y'all are so excited about this too already, which is amazing. People are adding them to their orders, um, which is exciting. I know not everyone plans for a July countdown or budgets for that, but the messages, the people saying, I just gave it a rewatch, I'm so excited, are making me even more excited and I cannot wait. Wait to dye them up, but they are available now in the shop. You can get either a 16 day or a 30 day countdown and you can add on a full skein if you'd like in a separate listing. Also, if you're not interested in the minis and you just want the full skein, that's also available, just the full skein and the gifts, or you could get the skein by itself without any of the gifts if you're adding it onto a box. And all of the minis are available in either my Sunfish base or my 420 base, so Fingering Weight or DK minis, which I know is ex exciting, not everyone does. And you'll get a few gifts in there. I'm not gonna tell you what they are, but you'll get a few gifts to open at the beginning or the end or whenever you want to help enhance your knitting tropical relaxation. And I am so, so excited about those. I'm definitely keeping one of these for myself. I have already decided. What am I gonna do with it? I don't know. Um, we may or may not have a pattern collaboration happening and I may or may not be keeping one of those for myself to make said pattern. But we'll see, nothing is decided yet. We're figuring out timelines, but I am so happy to hear how excited you all are. And if you haven't checked it out yet, all of those listings are available in my shop, which is linked down below. The only other thing I wanted to share, fiber related, that's not necessarily Arnie, is the fiber that's listed in my shop. Fiber launched with the February clubs last month and the cookie 2.0 and y'all loved it and it was so exciting so I actually went up and dyed a little bit more than what had been ordered on fiber and dyed some extra fiber braids to have in the shop as ready to ship options I know my wolf pack members have been asking I know other spinners have been asking saying we want fiber we want fiber are you gonna have any ready to ship so the answer is yes and I just wanted to show you some of it because it's so beautiful so the first thing I wanted to show you was the fiber club or February club dyed on fiber. So this is our Grand Canyon colorway and look at it on fiber. I think this is on American Rambouillet. I can feel it's definitely Rambouillet. So pretty, so fun having these like little punchy oranges, peaches, mauves, br tans, browns. Beautiful. And then this one was fun because someone had dyed up, which is, or ordered Witch's Brew, and I said, that would be beautiful on fiber. So here we go, Witch's Brew on, I, I, I don't know if this is Targi. I think it's Targi. And look how beautiful that is. So beautiful, there are a few braids of that in the shop. And then we have some from Cookies 2.0. We have Linzer Tarts, beautiful. Reds are so hard to capture. This is a little bit more wine. Oh, it looks pretty there though, whiny. Yeah, like that. Sometimes it looks very red. That is perfect representation, Linzer Tarts. Biscuits with the boss, which is really fun. And how fun would those be applied together? Right? That's cool. We have chocolate biscotti on Falkland. 
and these chartreuse pops are giving me life and that's so much fun and then i think these two are my favorite we have snickerdoodle on rambouillet it's so good it's so stinking good like look at it and we have ginger cookies on rambouillet the browns the orange the blues and i think these were made to go together someone needs to buy these and ply these and make something beautiful a traveler cow who knows but gorgeous beautiful fiber is in the shop and you can search by fiber because you can still search by base i know that's still a newer feature on my website so if you go to the ready to ship section and then one of the filter options, you could do select base and then you just click the fibers that you're interested in or click all of them if you're open to combo spinning and mixing things up. And you can see all of the fiber that is in the shop ready to ship now. And I'm so glad y'all are loving this as much as I am. Okay, I think that's everything. So let's just talk really briefly about life stuff. Last week, it was Wednesday. I don't know what Michael and I were doing, probably watching Game of Thrones. And then on Saturday, actually, my mom and her boyfriend Mickey came into town. They hung out with us. It was so much fun. We went to dinner. On Sunday, we did an escape room and got out with 21 minutes and changed to spare. I've never gotten out of an escape room without much time left. And I feel so proud of us. <laughs> we were all like, oh my gosh, I can't believe we did that. It was so much fun. I loved it. Um, and then it was so beautiful out. We walked around Bethlehem. We sat outside. We grabbed some beer. We had a snack from Rendezvous and Lost Tavern. Um, and then we came home and they weren't sure if they were leaving Sunday night or Monday morning. They ended up staying till Monday morning and I'm so happy they did. As we were sitting here on Sunday hanging out, my mom was looking at me and she goes, I should knit again. And I was like, yes, you should. Yes, you should. I have tried to get my mom and sister to knit for so long and they're just not interested. My mom knit and crocheted a bit back in the day, but she doesn't sit down much want to pick something up um but she was like can we get me yarn I was like yes yes come pick out yarn pick out needles pick out stitch stoppers I'll give you a project bag like I could not have been more excited and I didn't need to teach her anything I cast on for her because she said I always forget the cast on usually I make people learn but I was so nervous she was gonna be like I don't want to do this I just cast on for her and then she picked it up and was like oh yeah I remember and just started knitting she's knitting a garter stitch scarf with this really beautiful yarn from quill and fiber arts it is merino yak and silk so it's like drapey and soft and i'm like this is gonna be really good for you so i'm super excited i was like i don't know if she's ever gonna do it again after she leaves my house but she texted me yesterday she made a mistake she ripped back two rows and put it back on the needle she's like maybe i twisted my stitches i don't know but i did it and i am so happy and so proud and that's really cool um, but that was Monday. That was last night. Michael and I are going to see Dune 2 tonight. And although we've already seen Dune 1, it was a long time ago. I don't necessarily remember things that well. And I remember it was something that was like pretty involved. I had a lot of questions. You know, it's a world building sort of movie. Um, so I said, let's watch it again. So Michael and I rewatched Dune 1. And now I am so ready and so excited to see Dune 2 tonight. It is a two and a half hour movie. Luckily, it starts early. It's a 6.30 start time, so we still should be out of there at a reasonable hour because I have a very busy day tomorrow. But I'm super excited to see the movie. I'm super excited to be working on my knitting projects. And I'm super excited that I just got to hang out and spend the last little bit of time with you. I hope you saw something you enjoyed, whether it was something I'm making, something I purchased, or something that's in the shop. And I will definitely chat with you next time. Take care of each other. Bye.